Hello students, in this video lecture we will solve 1D structural problem. So starting with the question, a steel tapered bar is given, the length is 600 mm. So such kind of bar is it, so total length is 600 mm. It has cross sectional area of 650 mm square and 350 mm square on its two ends. So as it's a taper bar, on both the ends cross sectional area will be different. So over here it is 650 and over here it is 350 mm square. Now it is fixed at large end. What is given? That it has been constrained from this point, from this edge. So displacement at this point will be zero because it is constrained, right? Now what next data is given? That two forces two axial forces of 40 kN and 10 kN are applied. So at this two specific point at the end over here and 200 mm away from that point one extra force is applied. So 40 kN in positive x direction and 10 kN in negative x direction. The modulus of elasticity E is given the value is 200 cross 10 is to 3 Newton per mm square. Now what is to be done? first thing is to model the bar with three finite elements so originally this is a regular bar we need to create a finite element model which should have three finite elements right and the next thing is nodal displacement then next is stresses in each element and then reaction force at the supports what is our support this is our supports so at this point some amount of reaction will be generated because of these two point loads. So reaction will be there. So that reaction is to be found out. So basically we will start with modeling the bar with three finite elements. So this is our bar. As we discussed while uh, writing the steps of solving finite element problem that wherever there is a point load we need to give a specific node at that point. So one point load is over here so we'll start one element from here that element will be till this point because one more point load is there so we need to break that element over here so one element will be like this this is the taper irregular shape and our element will be regular rectangles now remain 400 mm length will be divided into two equal parts so total three number of elements will be generated and length of all the three elements will be 200 mm. We have generated equal length element. So what is the geometric property of element? Length and its cross sectional area. So length is 200, 200 and 200 but as far as cross sectional area is concerned we have only two data. We know this cross sectional area that is 650 and we know this one that is 350 because it is given at 650 and 350 at its two ends. So basically we need to define cross sectional area for element number 1, element number 2 and element number 3. So we'll generate four sections. This is section number 1, this is section number 2, this is section number 3 and section 4. So if here the area is 650 and here it is 350 and it is a regular taper so we can say that this will be 550 and this will be 450 because now the length is 200 200 and 200 this is also 200 this is 200 so it's a taper bar so we can say that 650 550 450 and 350 now as far as element number 1 is concerned it is between two sections of 650 mm square and 550 mm square so average of these two sections will be 600 mm square so 600 mm square will be the cross sectional area of element number 1. Same way for element number 2 it is between 550 and 450. So its area will be 550. And the cross sectional area for element number 3 is 450 plus 350 by 2 is equal to 400. So average of that 2. So now geometric terms are clear that lengths are L1, L2, L3 is equal to 200 a1 is equal to 600, a2 is equal to 500 and a3 is equal to 400. So such a way that 
finite element model has been generated over here these three are the elements as we know that we'll define the element number by such circle so that we can say that this is the element number and this is not number so so that there will be no confusion between element numbering and not numbering the next thing is q1 q2 q3 and q4 these are the nodal displacement we have defined four number of nodes so it each node what will be the displacement that is given by q1 q2 q3 and q4 other things are uh, aware that this is the point load in negative direction and this is in positive direction one more point load we have applied that is reaction at this point the process of calculating the cross sectional area has been given over here a1 600 a2 500 a3 400 for more clarification you can pause the video and see the process in detail the next and most important step is elemental connectivity friends as we know that these are the simple 2d uh, simple 1d elements so each element will be connected by two nodes but whenever more elements will be there elements having more nodes will be there more number of nodes will be there then elemental connectivity will be very important thing over here you can see that for element number one connectivity is one two because element number one is connected to node number one and node number two element number two is connected with two and three element number three is connected with three and four so over here elemental connectivity is quite simple the next thing is to form equilibrium equation for equilibrium equation will be requiring global stiffness matrix global load vector and global nodal displacement vector these three matrices will be composed together to create an equilibrium equation so first thing is global stiffness matrix how will define global stiffness matrix we have one equation for elemental stiffness matrix so using that equation we will form global stiffness matrix what is the equation k superscript 1 because it is for element number 1 is equal to e a by l 2 by 2 matrix of 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 so for all the three elements we can write such same equation as we know that a1 and l1 ratio of a1 and n1 will be different for all the elements but e its young's modulus is common so what we have done we have taken young's modulus is common and we have put the ratio of a by l into the matrix now what is a1 a1 is 600 and a1 l1 is 200 so the ratio is 3 so we just entered the value 3 into the matrix so 3 minus 3 minus 3 3 same way e is taken common for element number 2 what is the ratio of a2 by l2 it is 500 by 200 so that is 2.5 so 2.5 has been brought inside the matrix and next e is common what is the ratio of a3 by l3 it is 2 so 2 minus 2 minus 2 2 now the size of elemental stiffness matrix is 2 cross 2 because it is 2 number of nodes or we can say it's a 2 degree of freedom but our global stiffness matrix our global figure will be having total 4 numbers 1 2 3 and 4 number of nodes are there so that matrix will be of size of 4 cross 4 so we can't do the simple additions of element number 1 2 and 3 k1 k2 k3 can't just simply be added together we need to form one matrix of 4 cross 4 so how can it be generated we'll do addition in such a way element number 1 element number 2 element number 3 everywhere 200 cross 10 to 3 has been taken common and next data is see 4 cross 4 matrix is first generated 4 cross 4 as far as element number 1 is concerned it is connected with node number 1 and 2 so their entry will be taken place at row number 1 and row number 2 and column number 1 and column number 2 same way element number 2 is connected with 2 is connected with second and third node element number 2 is connected with second and third node so their entry will be there in second third second third row and second third column over here other elements will be taken as zero same way for element number three 
it is connected with node number three and node number four so that entry will be there in third and fourth column and third and fourth row so now we can simply do the addition of this elemental stiffness matrices and our final global stiffness matrix has been generated so three minus three minus three three this is for element number one this is for element number two and this is for element number three right the unit of global stiffness matrix is newton per mm the next thing is global load vector as we know that in global load vector three types of loading will be there its body force traction force and externally applied point loads in our case in question there is no mention of body force and traction force so in global load vector we will only take externally applied point loads now how many point loads are there p3 and p4 it is given and r we have taken because it is fixed at that point so constraint will be there that's why we have taken r so reaction r is there at node number one at node number two there is no point load at node number three it is p3 it is in negative direction and p4 so finally our global load vector will be like r 0 minus 10,000 and plus 40,000 and it is a global load vector it's a load so of course the unit will be Newton and the last thing is global nodal displacement vector it is just q1 q2 q3 and q4 all the values are unknown that is to be found out and as it is displacement the unit is mm now friends for one minute pause the video and think we have three three different matrices global stiffness matrix global load vector in global nodal displacement vector the unit of global stiffness matrix is Newton per mm for force vector it is Newton and displacement vector it is mm so you can simply form the equilibrium equation counting the units right so the equation will be k into q is equal to f so such a way we have generated the equilibrium equation in this equation how many unknowns are there there are five unknowns q1 q2 q3 and q4 and reaction r that is unknown but students as this not number one is fixed so q1 will be zero there will be no displacement at this point no displacement at this point because it is fixed so q1 is zero so now there are only four unknowns q2 q3 q4 and r using our elimination approach boundary condition applying our boundary condition elimination approach as we know the value of q1 will eliminate it el eliminate first row and first column from this equation so now our equation becomes this is our simultaneous equation it is by it is of 3 cross 3 you can simply write three equations from this matrices 5.5 q2 minus 2.5 q3 is 0 is equal to 0 next equation minus 2.5 q2 4.5 q3 minus 2 q4 is equal to minus 10,000 so three equations can be formed there are three unknowns and three equations so from any mathematical method you can solve this and you will get the value of q2 q3 and q4 like this the next question is we need to find stresses in each element so we have already derived this equations the set of equations that how to calculate the stress in each elements so finally it becomes sigma is equal to e into 1 upon l l is length of element minus q1 plus q2 see what we have calculated is q1 q2 q3 q4 it these are capital q and in this equation the q is small so writing the equation for element number one we know e for element number one what is l1 that we know now what is small q1 small q2 and capital q1 capital q2 as we discussed that for each element their own 
local numbering will be there so if there is an element number 3 in this figure for this element number 3 what is its not numbering elemental connectivity element number 3 is connected with not number 3 and not number 4 so there its elemental connectivity is 3 and 4 but consi considering this element as individual element its on local numbering will be 1 and 2 so this small q1 and q2 are local numbering so for all the elements small q1 q2 will be there now we need to just convert from this local numbering to global numbering so for element number 1 its local number is 1 and same node is global number 1 its local number 2 is its global number 2 but for element number 2 its local number 1 is its global number 2 and local number 2 is global number 3 this is local number and these are global number so for element number 3 its small q1 is equal to capital Q3 small q2 is equal to capital Q4 small q1 is equal to cap capital Q3 small q2 is equal to capital Q4 other values you know so you can simply calculate sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 for all these three elements and last and final thing remained is find out the reaction force so now writing the original equilibrium equation in which now q1 q2 q q3 and q4 are non value so you can write equation 3 into q1 minus 3 into q2 other things are 0 is equal to r 3 into q1 minus 3 into q2 is equal to r so apart from r all the values are known so you can calculate the value of reaction force friends refer this video again and again try to solve this numerical along with watching the video playing and pausing the video and if you have any query you can meet personally